have your Bibles today. We're in Matthew chapter 7. I hope you have a Bible in your hand because we want to get it in our hearts. <laughs> hey, uh, Matthew chapter 7, we're rolling through a series on the parables of Jesus and today is a great parable. We're looking at one parable in Matthew chapter 7 that is perfect for this past week that we have gone through and we're looking at the parable of the builders, the wise and foolish builders in Matthew chapter 7. I want to give you some really good context that you might not know for this parable. Jesus actually taught this parable two times that we know of. Once in Matthew 7 during the Sermon on the Mount and then another time in Luke chapter 6 during the Sermon on the Plain. That is P-L-A-I-N, not P-L-A-N-E. Uh, I want to give you the first point today just, uh, just that by way of context that our God is the God of the hills and the valleys. It's amazing that he tells this parable of the, of the wise builder and the foolish builder on the mountain, on the, for the Sermon on the Mount, and to a mostly Jewish crowd, a lot of it dealing with uh, our hearts and our attitudes. But then he also went on another mountain and came down to the valleys, to a level place, and told this parable again to a mostly Gentile or non-religious audience, and emphasized uh, in that sermon a lot of practical living stuff. Do we understand that our God is the God of the hills and he's God of the valleys? Amen. Do we understand that our God is the God of the heart, mind, soul, and spirit, as well as the God of flesh and blood and bones and practical daily living? You believe that? Do we understand that our God is the God of everything and everyone? Amen. According to 2 Peter 3, 9, our God is not willing that any perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. According to John 3.16, our God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Our God is the God of the hills and the valleys and he loves everyone more than anyone will ever love. Do you believe that? It's the truth whether you believe it or not. We might as well believe it if it's the truth, Amen. May we remember to let the whole world know that our God loves in good times, in bad times. He'll never leave nor forsake because he is and always will be the God of the hills and the valleys. Now let's get into our parable, Matthew 7, verse 24, the parable of the wise and foolish builders. Just four verses here, let's get into them. Therefore, Jesus says, Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, if you're able to highlight that or underline that, please do. As Jesus says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And this sounds like us in verse 25. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Amen? Amen. Verse 26, everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. We're gonna stop right there for today. Just this one parable, I wanna give you three parable points. Number one, Jesus is the rock, our sure foundation for eternal life and more. Do we know it? Do we believe it? It's the truth. I want to give you three uh, sort of sub-points, A, B, C, underneath, underneath this uh, number one point today. Uh, letter A under that, Jesus is the only way to receive salvation from hell unto heaven. If you've been here any length of time, you've heard me say that many times because that's the main thing. And we need to keep the main thing the main thing, amen? We don't want to get too far off from the main thing. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the, say it with me if you know it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus says. Let me give you letter B under number one. 
Jesus gives us his strength to face all of life's storms. You've probably heard Philippians 4.13 a few times here at North Shore. Say it with me if you know it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was awesome. Let me give you letter C. Jesus gives us his peace and calm during all of life's storms. Hopefully you are familiar with Philippians 4, 7. Please jot that down if you're not. Philippians 4, 7. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, which we can't even comprehend, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus, as we already mentioned, will give you one of two things during every storm in your life. He'll either calm the storm or he'll calm you. One or the other. Many stories of calming the storm. I remember being in this sanctuary during Irma. We opened it up for everybody and their pets and it was like Noah's Ark in here. It was about 80 plus people with a lot of animals, a lot of animals. Uh, my neighbor at the time came over and he had, I think, more animals than anybody. Uh, and he got back here in this, this room didn't have a lot of stuff in it. It's the storage room now, don't go in there, it's dangerous, but it was a little cleaned out. So he kind of got his animals all back in there. But, but he had one animal I didn't know about. And in the, after the electric went out, you were all kind of, you know, trying to go to sleep or rest or whatever, you know, we could do. Real quiet, real dark. And you hear, caca, caca. And we were just like, it's like Jurassic Park or something. And we're like, what is that? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, it's my, I don't know, cockatoo, one of those big birds that I don't know what kind it was. And he had it right back here, what we call the little green room where the, the praise band gets ready. Uh, he had a cover over it, so it was totally silent, but it woke up. And it woke us up. But one of the coolest things about Irma uh, during that time when we were all in here, we, we, we were so organized and people helped us from all over. We had a big meal we called the Last Supper and uh, we had a bunch of generators running and we, we plugged it up to a TV that we had right there where the camera and Diane is. And we were watching the, uh, the news and we were watching the hurricane. And we saw it, like if you were watching it, and Irma was huge, it was big. And it came through uh, Naples and it was coming our way. And we were like, oh my goodness, here it comes. And they were predicting, you know, the worst, 10 to 15 foot surge like we got with Ian. And here we are watching it on that TV, the lights are all out. And, and we, you know, we're going to the front door and watching the wind get heavier and heavier. And all of a sudden, we're looking on the TV and, and it was gone. It was just gone. And you know that it, it just, it, it, I believe it was God. Like right when it was starting to cross the river, the Lord did something and just knocked it down to where we didn't get hardly any storm surge. The wind knocked down. It was the hand of God, I believe. And we watched it. We were watching that TV and watching it and all of a sudden it was just like, Where'd it go? You know, and sometimes God will do that. He can still do that, amen? And he'll calm those storms sometimes. But sometimes he wants to do something even more important than what's on the outside. Are you with me? Do we understand that? And sometimes he wants to let some storms rattle around to help us on the inside to become more like him, to depend on him more, to trust him more, amen? And we don't like it because <laughs> the outside can get really scary and hurtful and, and harmful, but he never leaves and he will calm us on the inside. I praise him that he calms on the outside, but we praise him more that he calms on the inside, but it all starts with Jesus being our rock. Is he your rock today? Is he the foundation of your life? in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Is that what you're building your life on? Jesus Christ. That's the main thing. Hey, let me go to number two, point number two for our parable today. 
uh, knowing God's word and doing God's word from this parable, as we know, have very different results. Knowing God's word and doing God's word have very different results. For those of us who've been believers for a while, I want to give you several verses to hold on and take to heart. James 1, 22. James 1, 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. And then he adds deceiving yourself. We're very good, let's just be honest, at deceiving ourselves. We can't fool others very well, but we can fool ourselves really well, let's just be honest. This is for those who know God's word and who say a lot, I know, I know. I had a friend who told me, you know, uh, he, he had teenagers uh, at the time when we were talking and I said, how's it going? He said, if my teenage daughter says, I know, one more time, my head will explode. A lot of you have been there. Where I know, I know, right? This is for those who would say, I know. We, for those of you who've been believers for a long time and you know the word, knowing the word and doing the word, two different things with very different results. Let's continue verse number 23. And again, this is uh, James 1, James chapter 1, going on with verse 23, 24, 25. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, listen to this, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself but goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Very interesting because uh, this week, uh, I think it was Friday morning, we still didn't have electric. I go in the bathroom. You know, most of you go in the bathroom to comb my hair. I just make sure my face is okay. And I couldn't see my face. It was just dark. I went over to my wife. I'm like, is my face okay? I can't see in the mirror. You know, and she, you know, lied and said it was awesome and handsome and all those wonderful things because she's, <laughs> she's really amazing. Because she's amazing and knew I needed that. But, you know, that's what they say. Hey, if you look in the mirror and then you forget, right, what you even saw... That, that's a really good analogy of knowing God's word but not doing it. If we know God's word, he will help us to do it. Amen? He will strengthen us to do it. Verse number 25 in James 1, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. You believe that? Amen. Parable point number three this morning. Continue building your life on the rock until you see him face to face. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Amen. Continue building your life on the rock until you see him face to face. God is not done with me. And he's not done with you. He's not done with any of us. Let him continue his work in us so he can do more through us. Because that's what it's all about. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I had a dear friend. Uh, he has since passed away. But about 20 years ago, uh, he was a stuff person. If you're a stuff, stuff person, man, we need to pray for you. Because, you know, there's people that are stuff. People, they just can't throw anything away. I know none of you are like that. Just can't throw anything away. Just collect. Just collect, 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 collect. Um, and that's what this friend was. Awesome man of God, awesome friend. But I helped him move, and it's about 20 years ago, and I, I was in shock. I was stunned by all the stuff. Uh, so we moved it to uh, his place. He had some property, and he was building a, uh, he called it a garage. It was, today we'd call it a barn dominium. <clears throat> it had three uh, stalls, you know, with the, with the big RV height uh, garage doors, three of those. And then this, and a second story to put more stuff on. And then in the front had this teeny lighted little, little uh, apartment where they were going to live. And I, that was just a very good picture of, Living with your stuff. <laughs> but as he was building it, he was doing it himself. He knew he, he used to be in construction. He knew what to do. He got all the permits, was doing everything correctly. But I remember this one day where I was, uh, 
where I talked to him and he was mad, so mad. And I was like, why are you mad? Because the county failed my inspection for my wiring. And I'm like, oh, doggone them. Bad county. I can't believe they're doing that. You know, I don't know what's going on. And he's like, oh, I can't believe I did. You know, and he didn't explain anything. I just felt bad for him. And he, he was mad and, and went on. And somebody, somebody else, another friend was there. And, and I said, man, I can't believe that. He's a really good. He knows what he's doing. He, he's building this massive project. I can't believe they would fail him. And my friend said, listen, he's not following the plans. And I went, oh, okay. He said, now he was actually doing something better. Like with, with, with not all of the wiring, but a certain part of the wiring. He found some on sale that was better than what was in the plans. He was going to upgrade it, right? And so he did. He upgraded these, you know, and it was better. But it wasn't in the plans to upgrade it. So it didn't matter that it was better. Are you with me? And they failed him. They said, I'm sorry, if you want to upgrade it, then you have to submit a new plan for that part of your building and get that approved. And then you can, and he, he just thought, man, I'm doing something better. He had a plan, but it wasn't the master plan. And they failed us. Is that just one of the best illustrations and analogies of our lives that you have ever heard? God hit me with that. And I was like, wow. Because that's how we are sometimes. Are you with me? Because God has a plan. And there's no mistakes in that plan. There's no mistakes in that plan. But sometimes we think maybe something we know is a little better than the God of the universe. Because we're smart. <laughs> and we got plans. <laughs> But you know what? God has a better plan every single time. And we've got to trust him with that plan. We've got to trust him with that plan. Continue building your life on the rock with his plan, with his will. That's why we're always saying and praying, keep in step with the Spirit each day. So we can stay on God's path in his will. As we continue building our lives on the rock of Jesus, may we build each day according to his plan, his will, because it's all about his honor and glory and the furthering of his kingdom. Do you believe that? Amen, amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time that we could get together as the family of God and those who are seeking you. Lord, every week we get together uh, with the family of God and there are always some that come that, that are seeking you. And we praise your name for that. And we pray, Lord, right now for every single person in this, your sanctuary, your church building, who is seeking you, may they find you today. Don't let them leave today. Lord, without talking to me or Pastor Jeff or, or any believer near them, to find out how to build their life on the rock. If they've never done it, Lord, make today be the day because life is short. Life is short, but you are so good. And Lord, for every single person in here, may we build our lives on the rock of Jesus Christ and allow you to build according to your plans because that's what it's all about, your will and furthering your kingdom. Lord, continue working in us so you can work through us, Lord. We don't want to just receive from you all the time. Lord, we want to give you away. We want to be that river of your blessings. Help us and strengthen us to do that each day. And we'll give you the praise for we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you for coming. Go in peace. Have a great, calm week this week.